Number 1. Arbitets Museum. On the Laxholmen River Island in the Motala Strom is a museum all about working life in Sweden, both now and in the Industrial Age. The venue is Strikejarnet, a striking former textile mill dating to 1917 and with an unusual outline to adapt to the limited space on the island. The museum puts on exhibitions that run for several years, generally mapping out the history and future of industry, from social and environment perspectives. Number 2. Industrialandskapet. Norrköping's industrial heritage survives in this area on the Motala Strom, more than 30 years after the last factories in the center of the city shut down. These giant memorials for a bygone age mostly date to between 1850 and 1920 and are now taken over by cultural venues, eateries, a campus for Linköping University, an art school, the tourist office and a science park. Number 3. Stads Museum. In renovated industrial buildings across the water from the Arbitets Museum, the city museum recounts the progression of Norrköping from the 1600s to the present day. Naturally industry plays a big role, but there are also galleries for the city's rich shipping heritage. You can see typical urban and rural scenes from past times, observing traditional trades and farming techniques, more than 50 are presented. Number 4. Himmelstaland. This has an array of facilities open in summer, from camping grounds to a bathing area. But what has fascinated people for more than 150 years is the set of prehistoric petroglyphs etched into large panels of stone in the park. There are more than 1,600 images depicting boats and hunting scenes, with detailed illustration of animals, humans and weapons. Number 5. Abakarna. This walking route is known as the Abakarna and has lots to enjoy as it traces the course of the Motala Strom. One attraction is the Rhododendrondolin, Valley of Rhododendrons, which is exactly what it claims to be, a pathway through stunning rhododendron bushes, radiant when they're in bloom in spring and summer. Number 6. Karl Johans Park. In the center is a statue of the namesake King Charles XIV John, which was cast in Munich and placed here in 1846, two years after he died. Towards the end of that century Norrköping began using its greenhouse to cultivate cactuses and other succulent plants. Every summer since 1920 these have brought out from their winter home and arranged in a highly intricate pattern at a specific space in Karl Johans Park. Number 7. Norrköping's Konst Museum. The city's art museum is a heavyweight cultural institution, with Swedish works spanning several centuries and movements. If there's one focus though it's 20th century modernism represented by paintings, sculpture, photography and video art in one of the country's premier collections for this movement. The print collection is sensational and comprises 25,000 pieces going back to the 1400s. Number 8. Louis de Geer Concert and Congress. One of the showpieces in the industrial landscape is the Hallmans Bruck Paper Mill, which operated from 1609 to 1988. As soon as it closed down planning began for a concert hall in the cavernous interior. This opened in 1994, and 20 years later is still a spectacular feat of architecture. The hall can hold 1,380 spectators and is the home of the highly regarded Nortrupping Symphony Orchestra. Number 9. Hedvig's Kirka. The city's prettiest church is on Tiska Torget, which is to the east around the river bend from the industrial landscape. The church is named for Hedwig Eleonora of Halstein Goddard, who was on the throne at the time of construction in the last decades of the 17th century. The building was incinerated, along with a lot of Nortrubing cityscape, during the Russian attack in 1719. Although the church's facade is discreet, the interior is rich. Number 10. Tiska Torget. Hedvig's Kirka shares a square with three of the city's most imposing buildings, the City Hall, the former private bank and the Grand Hotel. All with variations on the national romantic style, these were built within a few years of each other at the turn of the 20th century and loom high over the square. Take a few minutes to inspect the facade of the City Hall, which is built with bricks baked in Helsingborg, 
and at the very tip of its tower has a 4.5-meter golden statue of its patron Saint Saint Olaf sitting on a throne. Hope you like this video. For more videos, please subscribe to our channel.